Hello everyone and welcome to another video and today it is finally here. Xenogears is here. Praise the Lord. Praise Square Enix. Praise Alan. Okay, maybe not that far, but it is pretty exciting and we are going to be taking a quick look at the banner that is here for the next little while and whether you should or should not spend any resources on it. And of course, right now, the banner that we are looking at is this one, which is basically Faye's banner. In a couple of days, we will end up getting Elle's banner, followed by Bart's banner last, and then a banner with all three of them anyway. So first of all, I want to talk about something really quickly, which is the FEB ticket. And now, if you don't know what these are, they are basically limited time tickets for this raid event only. And what is happening here with my hair? There we go. Something to be noted in particular is the fact that two of these limited tickets are available from Raid Rewards. Now, this is rather important if you think about it, because it only means that you now need to spend 15k Lapis to end up getting one of the five stars guaranteed, as opposed to the 25k Lapis from before, so that does make it a little bit cheaper to necessarily go on one of these banners. More around 11k, but definitely not particularly. Well, okay, it's still it's still expensive, especially with Golden Week coming up, so spend your resources wisely. But let's talk about these brand new units, and there is something interesting about all of these units. First of all, we're going to lead in with Faye, since it is Faye's banner first. Now, Faye is the main character. He is absolutely, you know, just one of those characters that had to be in this banner. And to be fair, a lot of people have said, well, maybe he's not the most exciting unit, but I disagree. First of all, let's talk about its trust mastery. In general, it's a materia with 20 attack, 20 defense for percentage, and then an extra 30% attack when equipped with clothes. Since there are a lot of units who use clothes, this is just a generally good TMR. But it's an amazing TMR when you consider the fact that it also gives an extra 5% MP per turn. That's valuable for CG Hayu, that's val valuable for Randy, that's valuable for a lot of different attackers. So I have to say, this is just a fantastic uh, regular TMR. Now, Super Trust Mastery, his Trust Mastery beats a lot of other clothing Trust Masteries. 1,200 HP, 30 attack, 25 defense, 25 spirit. Just good all around, plus an extra 50% attack when equipped with a knuckle. This DMR is great for him. It's amazing for Tifa. I just love this in general. But I'm not going to go super into detail about Faye yet. That will be a specific unit unit review. What I want to talk about instead is general things about Faye. First of all, I want to bring up another unit who's particularly powerful when it comes right down to it, and that is Cloud. Now, Cloud has a 204 base attack in his 7-star form with an extra 65 points. Now, Cloud is also known in the game to be able to reach the highest natural attack stat in the game, I think, with a whale's a super whale's ability, it can hit about 3,000 attack or something stupid like that, 2,800. It's some, it might even be 3,200. I can't remember, but the point is, it's higher than any other unit in the game right now. Now, the interesting thing that I particularly like about Fade is the fact that his base attack is 205, with an extra 65 points put into attack. That is insanely strong. That is the highest base attack, I believe, in the entire game. With the extra 65 points, it means, in theory, he can reach higher than Cloud can. And I think that's a really important thing to remember about this unit, because one extra point of attack when you're stacking a whole bunch of attack passives is insane. It can get really out of hand really fast. So that is something to note about Fade. Now, other than that, his Limit Burst is a 2,000% 23 hit with a 80% debuff to Fire, Water, Wind, Earth, Light, and Dark, and it gives him Triple Cast per turn. 2,000% Limit Burst is really, really strong with the Elemental debuffs as well, and giving himself Triple Cast, which means, of course, he is, you guessed it, a true dual hand unit. And in naturally in his true dual hand kit, he actually has, I believe, about 150% naturally, which is 
very, very strong. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of just base true dual hand. All it means is that you essentially need one of Clouds and one of Nal and Naru's or one of Beatrix's Super TMR and you've already hit the 300% and then you can just throw on whatever else you want on him. Now, you may think that he can only equip Fist, but thankfully Alan was particularly nice and gave him the ability to equip Spears too. So putting on something like Nal and Naru's spear, or their, uh, if you're a really old player, you could equip a the Holy Lance onto him. There are a lot of true dual hand spears you could equip on this guy and get a much better result than this, since there aren't too many true dual hand fists yet. But even one true dual hand fist that is, I don't know, 180 attack, and this guy will give Squall, a, or I mean Cloud, a big run for his money in terms of the total attack. Now, other than that, he has some interesting stuff, ignoring fatal attacks. He has some chaining abilities that are 10 hit, and I'm not entirely sure who they would chain with. I think 10 hit is... No, Sephiroth is 12. And that could be the thing about this guy. He does have some awkward chaining, but he does have some generally nice elemental imbune abilities, which are kind of in the same vein of Randy in that they hit, um, they will hit an enemy and also give him an element for the, or sorry, they don't give him the elemental imbune, but they are elemental attacks and debuff the enemy for that element. So full elemental coverage is particularly nice, but he's not a chainer. He feels like a chain finisher more than anything. And he also has one cooldown ability that's kind of weird, which is a 1,000% AoE, one-hit magic attack with 100% of spirit used as magic. Now, and it also debuffs AoE too. It's interesting AoE built ability, but spirit? I'm not sure about that. Um, Lyra 2.0, but actually good in attack too? Maybe. It's kind of a little bit weird. Uh, you'd have to really see. But in his kit, he also get has a lot of just natural attack passives, like a lot of natural attack passives, extra percentages for some of his abilities, and limit burst damage up of 1.3. In general, I think he's kind of weird in that, well, he doesn't he's not necessarily a chainer, but he feels like a chain finisher and a true dual hand unit with a very, very high base attack. Now, does that mean he's just the best thing ever? No. Probably not. Probably it's better to um, get some of the other units on this list, but he's not bad. He's definitely not bad. The 205 base attack really is kind of a, oh, moment more than anything. So moving on next is we'll talk about Bart's next. And so Bart's is this guy right here. If you remember, he's a whip, which some people naturally poo-pooed, but I will not say poo-poo just yet. First of all, his Trust Mastery is 135 attack whip, which will be mainly good for himself, and an extra 50% physical damage for his machines. His Super Trust Mastery is a 60% attack, limit burst fill rate of 100%, and 50% either physical or magic damage versus machines. So this guy is definitely a machine killer, and stacking that many machine killers, um, yeah, if there's a machine boss in the future, watch out for this guy. Other than that, his base attack is 201 and 50 extra stack attack pots, which we'll talk about why that is so much lower in a second. His limit burst is a maxed out 1660% AoE one hit physical attack that debuffs for five turns 70% to defense and spirit. That's really strong. That's a strong defense spirit debuff with a high hitting physical attack. Pretty nice. Other than that, here's the interesting thing about this guy. Dodge unit. He actually has in his kit, naturally, a 30% chance to dodge physical attacks. So if you're stacking dodge on him, he could be a pretty good dodge unit. Also because he has a 3 turn 100% chance to be targeted, 3 turn 200% limit burst fill rate. So if there is an enemy focusing on him, he could not only be doing damage, he can also be dodging at the same time. And he, that ability does not have any cooldown or anything, so he could constantly be a targeted unit. 
Now, other than that, he has some chaining abilities. He has some extra attack when equipped with a whip, which is good because you'll probably want that. He has an auto use a self 80% attack buff, which is pretty good when you think about it. But his interesting thing is that he can also use a couple of chaining abilities that have different elements on it. A fire ability for 50 MP that's single target eight hit, eight frames, fire physical attack, that also hits for a 100% single target physical attack. Hmm, that sounds like someone. Ah, yes, Hayu. This guy is potentially a Hayu chaining partner and a good chaining Hayu chaining partner since one of Hayu's abilities can debuff for fire. Of course, it's not the same ability, but it's a potential synergy here. He has an earth hit physical attack. He has a 12 hit at 12 frames wind and water ability that also self heals himself or debuffs wind and that's potentially good with Sephiroth I believe without trying it I won't know exactly but it's kind of interesting and he has in his normal kit an AoE debuff of 60% to attack and magic for five turns which that's a long time that's a really long time he also has wield dual weapons naturally in his kit. The last time I saw that was Tifa, and Tifa ended up being a damn solid unit, just a damn solid unit in general. Now, let me just really quickly, because I didn't make the comparison earlier, but I just want to take a look at Tifa's base stats, because Tifa can hit about eh, 2,000 attack, which is pretty good, and she had a base attack of 199, so Bart's base attack of 201 is better, especially with dual wield in his kit. I will admit that whips is a little bit more difficult, but hey, maybe in the future we'll see an amazing whip. For equipping his DMR, you get an extra 100% uh, sleeping confuse and extra limit burst damage, and an auto use of self-fill of 10 limit burst crystals. I'm not sure if it, that's the start of the fight or every turn. If it's the every turn, then it's potentially the most busted thing ever, which is why I think it's not. He also gets an extra 60% attack when dual wielding, plus some modifiers for his kit. That's outside. And then in his seven star, he also gets a fire, water, wind, and earth ability that that gives him those elements to his attacks for five turns. That's pretty nice. It also gives him 200 MP split over five turns and fills his limit burst cage for five crystals. That's pretty good too. So the, all of those abilities are just, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. He has an evade one attack for three turns and gives himself a three turn 200% limit burst fill rate. But the ability I really love in his kit is this, which is available turn one on a four turn cooldown, self four turn plus 250% to attack, self four turn plus 100% stat debuff resist, self 1200% HP heal split over four turns, self 320 MP heal split over four turns, self 28 limit burst crystal fill. So it basically gives him an entire limit burst, gives him a buff of 250% to attack, heals himself for multiple turns, and protects himself against debuffs. That is an insanely strong ability, and it can just be recast pretty much as soon as it's over. I generally think this unit is incredibly strong. I, I think he is potentially much stronger, and everyone is just saying, oh, well, there aren't many good whips. Okay, but this guy just has a lot in his kit, and his DMR works really well for him, plus machine killers, lots and lots of machine killers. And the last unit I want to talk to you about is basically the goddess of this banner, L. L. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they made L, but maybe they probably shouldn't have. Now, the other reason that I want to talk about L is because on the horizon, I tried to think, who is potentially the next big magic damage dealer who's not in a collaboration? And the, the units like 
keep thinking of that are coming up are Axtar, Orin, and Aerith, probably. So I can't potentially think of too many magic de big magic damage dealers that will be in the future. And quite frankly, there's only one way to put L. L is essentially CG Sakura 2.0. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, L's TMR is a 32 attack, 120 magic rod, which is pretty decent, but it also gives an extra 20% to the magic stat. That's really amazing. Her super DMR is a 60% magic when equipped with a rod, 60% fire, water, wind, and earth resistance when just equipped. That's amazing material. Now, the other thing is that her base magic stat is 219. That's a really high base magic stat that gets an extra 65 points. To put that in comparison, CG Sakura is only 204 with fixed 50 extra points, and we know how strong CG Sakura is, especially in long fights. This is very strong. This is very, very strong. Now, her limit burst is a two maxed out 2,000% AoE one hit magic attack that gives herself a 150% magic bop for three turns. That's really strong. That's incredibly strong. That's very, very incredibly strong, as a matter of fact. In her kit, though, her kit is just insane. Besides recovering 10% MP per turn, which if you put any more MP recovery on her, that's just insane. She has attacks for each and every element uh, the, of the wind, earth, fire, and water variety. She has debuffs for defense and spirit to the enemy for three turns, and she still gets six hit abilities in with it, which is very strong. She has a lot of natural passives for HP, MP, magic, and spirit. She has AoE wind hit attacks that debuff for wind damage, just like CG Sakura. She's sleep silence, confuse resistant, and then she has earth chaining abilities that are 16 hits that debuff for earth, fire abilities that are just a one hit but still debuff for fire, water abilities that hit for five hits that debuff for water. All of that is incredible. And she does extra damage versus machines too. But in her kit, she can also dual cast. Yes, naturally, just getting a six star of her will allow you to dual cast. But when we get into her seven star, this is where every comparison just basically falls apart, which is her by equipping her TMR rod, which you're going to, you're just going to, you get triple cast. N not for one turn, you, you just get triple cast of basically all of her abilities. And this is the part where every mage will lose out to this girl. Because for 78 MP in her 7-star kit for Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water, which is a great song, by the way. Well, actually, it's, it's a band, right? Anyway, let's not get this. She has a base 450% 5 or 1 hit ability. Now, the interesting thing is that they are Fire, Wind, Earth, and Water magic, which she can debuff but they gain 200% for each use to a max of 1,450%. That is insane. That is bonkers. That is nuts. That is, and she's triple casting it, meaning she will get there faster than every other unit. In long-term fights, this is insane. But not only that, and gaining limit burst crystals per turn, her cooldown ability, available turn one on a four turn cooldown, gives her 240 MP back split over three turns, and learns pentacasting for five turns. That's CG Sakura's ability with MP heal. But it also AoE three turn debuffs 100% for fire, water, wind, and earth resistance. She has a huge coverage of elements that can be switched out basically on the fly. She can triple cast, pentacast, and debuff 100%. That's insanely stronger than CG Sakura. And her other cooldown ability is a 1600% one-hit magic attack. Insane. And she gives herself, in her, for her 120 ability, a 1.5 times to limit burst damage, so basically 3000%, and extra magic for either dual-wielding or two-handing. 
Yeah. In general, this is an absolutely kind of just bonkers banner. If nothing else for L. L is incredibly strong, and I don't know who will come along to necessarily beat her, but she could just be, in general, the strongest mage for a very, very long time. With that being said, though, Bartz and Faye both have their very clear strengths to me, and it could be, you know, you will find your reasons for both of these units. But in general, I have to say, super solid banner, absolutely cool that they are giving Xenogears the respect it deserves for its 20th anniversary. I'll probably be doing some polls for L, if nothing else. Why the hell not? So thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. And we will be doing, of course, specific reviews for all of these units in the future.